Hey everybody, thanks Hello. for coming. Um, we are Sandra and Isabel. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and um, we are both in the project Carables, um, which is about open source hardware and healthcare. And um, we will tell you a bit more about the project, but we want to start with the need. Why is there a need for open source hardware and healthcare? Basically, um, when you talk to people with special needs and physical impairments, you very often hear that they have um, very special needs for supportive um, products that help them to, to manage their daily tasks. And also, you often hear that um, these products are either not existing on the market or they are very difficult to manipulate and to hack and very often people feel stigmatized by the product that they are, that they, uh, are existing on the market because they look really sanitary. So um, we found that it is very needed that people um, come together and develop open source hardware products for these people with special needs especially together with those people. And now it's already black. Yeah. Um, if you come to realize um, that people with special needs uh, don't have the projects they want, you will see that um, they will just start hacking themselves. So um, if they don't know how to solder, they will find somebody to, who knows how to solder. Um, a maker who wants to do something to make the world better might be have a friend who does have a special need and so they co-create, they do something um, together. And if you're knowledgeable about open source as a principle um, where you just publish everything that you create, somebody else somewhere around the world on the internet can just build upon your project. And so if you um, publish those, um, they will immediately yeah, be recreated, for example, or uh, are just an experience or an um, example for other people to uh, create more. So we brought you a few of the projects um, that are currently already existing and that are like, you immediately think about a prosthesis, for example, because um, the XT project, for example, is very, why do I speak on the microphone? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, the XC uh, prosthesis, for example, is very um, uh, well known already. It looks beautiful. It doesn't look like coming from a hospital. Um, there are a wide variety of um, them because everybody can just build upon them. Um, if you think about what can you 3D print, uh, you can imagine an otoscope um, is needed in a crisis region but maybe it's not available at the moment. So you just need to ship one 3D printer or a few um, that are powerful enough to build enough of those items so they are um, used in a mobile hospital, for example. Uh, next up, um, there are so many projects that fill a need that is not there already, uh, f for a thing that is not there already, like a cane uh, for blind people, um, for children because um, children up to six, they didn't use uh, the canes before because they were not available, because um, they need to be adjusted all the time in length. And so um, uh, they built them themselves, which is really amazing. And now you can just order the kit and build it yourself, or you can order it um, if you can't do it yourself, um, directly made. And so this uh, fills a really important gap. Then there are things um, that are really, really expensive if you buy them on the market, uh, like a tricycle um, for a child that can't really use a normal bicycle. And they need to be adjusted all the time because children grow so fast. And so if you just uh, create them with CNC and wood and build them together, it's so much easier to adjust them to the very special need of the child. Maybe it can't hold the back very well, or maybe it can't hold the hands very well. And so um, you can adjust all those needs. And this is a project um, that has already been recreated uh, quite a few times. And now we come to one that Isabel um, started also, um, that also led to starting for us uh, creating these 
yeah, central platform idea that we don't need to search everything on instructables and on hackability or whatever, um, but that we yeah, collect all the projects together. So, Yeah, this is a project from two years ago and it's called Made for My Wheelchair and it was um, an attempt to um, to define a collaborative process um, and to develop and co-create products um, for wheelchairs together with wheelchair users. So we had a team of seven wheelchair users and um, we designed a whole range of different solutions for these wheelchairs that ought, um, that were supposed to be um, easily to manufacture in a fab lab and um, also they should look um, good and um, be really um, at the center of the need of the of the users. So um, I want to show you two projects. Um, one is the open trailer, which is a trailer for um, electric wheelchairs that you can build by your own. And um, uh, it's um, made out of simple plywood. Um, and we have been creating an instruction that you can easily find on the web in the Instructables page. Um, and um, it is made of very simple, easy at hand parts that you can partly buy at the Bauhaus and um, that you can mill with a milling machine. And then you have a beautiful trailer that you can hand, uh, that you can fix onto your wheelchair and it sounds all very easy. It's not that super easy. It takes about a day to manufacture it and you need somebody who has some experience with a milling machine, at least. Um, but it is a good example because it um, it really makes people with the wheelchair um, much more flexible in their daily um, moving and they can transport an assistant and also they could go shopping with it. Another example um, is this open light. It's a, like a lighting system for wheelchairs and it has different modules. Um, as you see, there's one for the floor and two for the front, but there's also a version for the back. Um, and um, they can be made, ah, there's no uh, slide for this because it moved up. Um, they can be made um, with a 3D printer. Um, you have a trinket and a LED light and you can um, manufacture it also by yourself. Yeah, so these are, this, as Sandra said, is a project that, that kind of led us to the next and also like all these other examples before and there's many more. So um, at the moment we are, um, kind of researching um, and trying to build up or help building up this already existing community um, to foster more projects to come along that, that go into this healthcare process. And this is um, another project from VAR Society that Sandra will talk about. Yeah, so within the, the project that we are um, both uh, supporting, um, there is a partner who's called Bach Society in Amsterdam, and they are like a full fe featured fab lab. You probably know them from Fairphone, uh, which also comes out of them. And um, we're starting with uh, also having this co-creation. So this um, woman came and said, well, with my cane, uh, I'm blind, and during night, I'm almost invisible to everybody, and I don't want to wear all like reflecting colors, but wouldn't it be great to have like a lightsaber cane? And so um, they made uh, many iterations and came up with uh, this amazing um, design um, that now I also want to have one, actually. <laughs> um, and the next one is a little bit more um, private, um, where if you had an operation, for example, or if you need um, a, an, yeah, an artificial uh, bowel X thing, yeah. So if you need such a bag to carry with you all the time, um, and uh, you have all the processed food um, in there, uh, and it stinks sometimes, and you want to visit friends, or you are outside um, somewhere and you don't only want to yeah, be in your house, you want to close it. And so far it wasn't possible to close it. And so now they created this lid that is at the moment from silicon, but they try to make it also with sustainable materials that you, for example, when visiting a friend can just dispose this bag in a um, normal, um, yeah, in a normal trash and don't be embarrassed about it. Um, and the next one is from FabLab and from Isabel. 
Yeah, it's basically never for me, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing a, a small part in this. We are like a big team. Um, and uh, But uh, this is a, a device that helps you to read when you are blind. So actually what you see here is um, this paper with black and white um, surfaces. And um, the two things, the fingers, they have um, infrared sensors and they can tell what is white and what is black. So they can tell contrast and they vibrate um, whenever you come over the black. So um, it's a device that we are at the moment still having at quite um, low resolution, but it's going to help people to be able to, to touch um, and read um, yeah, normal handwriting. So we have a little um, girl, Yuli, she's 12, and she really um, kicked off this project with us um, because she said, I can write, but I can never read what I was writing, so I want some tool that helps me to do that. And so we are on the road doing, finding out how that could work. Um, another project um, that we are working on at the moment is um, from Peggy Silop. It's um, here how you like to hear. Um, Peggy um, is also a user and she um, is losing her hearing uh, ability. Um, and she started to experiment quite a bit on um, hacking um, hearing aids and um, giving herself a better environment for understanding um, the acoustics. And this is a little prototype that we've built in a, in a hackathon in the Fab Lab where it supports um, simply like a better Dolby surround system in your car where you can um, fix your audio system behi behind your back because your hearing aids normally take much um, better the sounds that come from, from behind. So these are some insights on projects, but now we have some questions for you. Yeah. Well. <laughs> So um, our first um, call for you is if you um, have an idea how to make one of these projects better or if you have an idea about um, what we could try, for example, for the girl to be better able to read um, what she writes, um, we're extremely happy if you um, come to us. Second, if you yourself or somebody you know has a challenge um, that probably is easier to fix through creating something yourself or modifying something yourself than by buying something from a sanitate house or somewhere. Um, that's something where we would really love to hear um, what your ideas are. Um, also, if you have an idea about what can make just everyday life easier in terms of how to navigate, how to uh, eat easier with a spoon or something um, that is just mildly related to um, everyday life would be also really interesting. And also, if you have a hackerspace or if you're part of a hackerspace that is interested in uh, working together with people um, who have um, some kind of special need and who would like to um, create such projects or recreate such projects, would be also amazing if you just come to us um, and um, would uh, yeah start this. And one of the um, hackerspaces Fab Labs um, involved is Fab Lab Berlin, and they're um, starting a hackathon um, where you Hack can participate <laughs> also in Berlin. But um, this is only an example for what in every other city somewhere in the world would be possible. So. Yeah. Also, if you're interested in the topic, and as it is all about collaboration, there will be a discussion in this afternoon. Um, where exactly is it? Somewhere there. <laughs> Over there. Um, with, uh, with some people from um, our crowd. Um, and yeah, for everyone who is living close to Berlin or in Berlin, we really would like to invite you to come and join the processes. For example, at the Open uh, Health Academy that we are starting to prototype um, for a first time in March. So there will be a three-week program with um, three um, sprints, design sprints, um, and um, some other activities in between um, where you can learn how to co-create, uh, where you can bring in your skills um, and um, prototype um, real solutions for real needs. And of course, we will also publish then how these um, sprints, for example, work or how these um, 
prototyping series work um, that in Amsterdam were done, um, everything publicly available, open source, um, because that's the key part about it um, on the Caribles platform. And do we? Oh, yeah, sharing. And yeah, of course, you can also um, get to us online or now or also tomorrow at uh, four in the dome tent where we want to speak a little bit more about um, what ideas should we um, further uh, tackle. Yeah, and we brought flyers, so take them. <laughs>